guys, how's it going? It's Douglas here at Drumboy Productions, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a pretty sick mask unboxing. So today's video is going to be another entry in the Drown Ghoul Mask series. If you guys don't know what that is, a couple years back I started this series where I sent a bunch of different artists off copies of usually just my standard Drown Ghoul V1 mask and let them paint it and finish it however they want and then send it back to me, usually as a surprise. And then I unbox it here and show you guys it, tell you a little bit about it, etc. You're probably familiar with it. Well, this is something kind of like that. However, this is a one-off piece. This is a Drown Ghoul V2 in here. This is the only Drown Ghoul V2 that I've sent off to an artist to have finished. I only got a few copies. Most of those I finished myself. However, I had to make an exception here because a very, very exceptional artist wanted to finish one of these up. And the V2 was the perfect sculpt to use for their style. So I am very, very interested in seeing this in person. So I sent this blank off about a year and a half ago, I think, almost exactly to the day, because I remember we were about to start working at that haunted attraction. I, I want to say we were doing like our first walkthrough to become familiar with the haunt before we started working, and I received pictures of this mask fully completed and finished, and it blew me away. I've been super, super excited about it ever since. I actually sent Alex two blanks to finish. One is finished, which I think is the exact one in here, and there's a second one that I don't think has been completed yet, but I'm very excited to see that in the future, but I've been waiting a very, very, very long time for this, so let's go ahead and get right into the unboxing. As you can tell, everything was packaged very, very well, taped up really nicely, so I went ahead and chopped the top of it open because there also was not a return address on it, so I wasn't entirely sure who it came from or what it was I was waiting on because it's been in the mail a few months now. So, right at the top here, we've got plenty of packing peanuts. You guys know how much I love packing peanuts. Definitely not the bane of my existence. So uh, let's just go ahead and scrape all these onto the floor here so that I'll have something to do later and I can spend a lot of time picking these up and cleaning up this mess. And from a top-down shot, you can see it in there, or you probably can't. To you guys, it probably looks like a pitch black box. And I'm going to give you guys the first look at this in person. All I've seen of this is a little bitty horn. A little bitty horn was sticking out. And I knew, I knew whenever I saw that what this was. So let's pull it out. Wow, I cannot see it in my camera's viewfinder, so. So guys, just to give you a frame of reference for what this is supposed to look like beforehand, I'll go ahead and put a picture up now of one of the blanks or what the original sculpt looks like and a little bit of back history on this because I haven't really talked about these a whole lot. You guys know the classic Drown Ghoul V1 um, and that actually, funny enough, that this all ties together. I'll get into it. I got messaged by Christian Olofsson and he said, you know, what do you think about this? Or he just sent me a picture. I, I think he just sent me a picture. And at first I was like, wow! That's amazing, that's a really cool sculpt, but it, it it looks a little bit like the V1. It looks like it took some took a few things from the Drown Ghoul V1, borrowed those, and changed it into a new piece. And as it turns out, that sculpt was a surprise and a gift from Christian. I had nothing to do with it, I knew nothing about its creation, he just kind of showed it to me, and there it was. And I love it, and ever since then, of course, it's taken on a life of its own. You guys have seen the Drowned copy, you've seen a few different variants. I actually don't have that many myself for me to wear. I think I have mainly just the Drowned one. I have another one that Christian sent me that's a Slipknot style one, which is pretty awesome. And a couple others. So guys, here it is. Not the easiest thing to see in this low lighting, but it's essentially the Drown Ghoul V2 that has been massacred and has a pentagram carved into the face with a six carved into the forehead. Of course, kind of a tribute to the Iowa Clown mask from Slipknot. And guys, I am a Slipknot fan. I'm not the biggest Slipknot fan. I'm not necessarily a Slipknot collector, but I have been listening to them my entire fucking life. And of course, I love the masks and the Iowa Clown's amazing. A while back, I had an Iowa Clown on my own and I've missed it ever since I let go of it. And this is the next best thing. What's really amazing at looking at this up close is that it all looks like dead flesh and it looks like it was seriously carved into the face. So the artist that converted this Drown Ghoul V2 is Alex Wood, also known as a Gotham Cloth, also known as Shadow Masks. And if you guys haven't checked them out and aren't following them already, what are you doing? Go do it right now. Not only is Alex an amazing artist, but probably one of the most influential people in the mask community. 
almost kickstarting this entire subgenre or style themselves. You guys have probably seen and heard of the Red Angel, the DJ Snooky Punch mask, etc. Most of you probably know what a Red Angel is, or you know what a Gotham Cloth mask is, whether you saw it on AJ's channel, whether you've seen them in the mask groups, posts here or there. It was a very, very famous mask for quite a while, and Alex does some really, really amazing work. Funny enough, the person that has the biggest collection of Alex's work is the person who kind of helped design the Drown Ghoul V1. My buddy Stan Gatek, who's a tattoo artist and also graphic design artist, worked with me whenever I was trying to develop the design of my Drown Ghoul V1. I did a bunch of different sketches, kind of handed them to Stan and said, what do you think, what can we do with this? And Stan said, give me a little while, and sketched up what is known as the Drown Ghoul. You guys have obviously seen my original sticker design, the logo for the channel, etc. That mask was designed by Stan and then sculpted by Ryan Vernon, a good friend of mine as well. And like I said, Stan has a massive, massive collection of Alex's work. Some of the most impressive pieces that you'll ever see. Just truly works of art. Every one of them is a work of art. I've wanted a piece from Alex as long as I've been collecting masks. <laughs> like, legitimately some of the coolest work out there. However, very, very hard to get a hold of. So don't go necessarily bothering Alex trying to buy any masks. If you go follow them, keep up to date with their social media. When they have pieces available, you'll know about it. And holding this right now is kind of a dream come true because I doubt I'll ever end up with a Red Angel or anything that cool myself, but to have that artist, someone whose work has inspired me as well as many, many others, paint and finish one of my masks is amazing and it's mind-blowing. It also kind of feels like things come full circle just because, like I said, Stan being that collector, being the person that worked on the Drown Ghoul, which led to the evolution of the Drown Ghoul V2 being created and the Drown Ghoul V2 being touched on by Alex. It just feels like everything came full circle and I'm really, really happy about it. And looking on the inside, I can see that Alex signed the inside of the mask as well, which is something I really, really love. I love it when artists sign their work. So thank you for that, Alex. And to tell you more about the process of making this piece and getting these really, really gruesome, gritty details, here's Alex themselves to tell you more about it. Okay, this video is about a collaboration between Christian Olufsen, Drowned Boy Cosplay, and myself. And Christian Olufsen created one of the creepiest masks I've ever seen at that mouth. And I told, I told them I really liked it, and... Drown Boy Cosplay offered to send me two copies for me to customise and he'll choose the best one and I'll send him that one. It took me a while to come up with the like, what idea of what I was going to do. I couldn't think of anything and I went back looking at all the ones that have been finished, customised by people and I noticed a lot of them were Slipknot but there were no Iowa Clown ones. So I knew exactly what I had to do. I had to make an eye of a clown one. And here is an original copy. Blank. Creepiest masks I've seen. And one thing I noticed on when I received them is the detail, the pores, the lines. It's just the creepiest thing I've seen. And here is my finished Iowa mask and people didn't understand how I made this basically what I did was I drew the lines on the blank super glued thin sheets of leather to either side of the lines underneath then I carefully cut the lines out with the scissors and then filled them in with a mixture of tissue paper and latex and sculpted them to look like scars and cuts. Then I painted it and I believe this is one of the best paint jobs I've ever done. I love it. And the horns are resin from my from the mould I made for my Iowa clown mask. So yet again, thank you, Alex, not only for the video, but for working on this piece for me. It means a lot, more than you'll ever know, more than I can put into a video and say thanks for. So yet again, guys, if you're not already following Alex, go do so right now. 
And I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I love you all. I'll be sure to give you guys some worn shots and some close-ups of this piece. See you next time.